today I'm gonna to show you all my secrets to make a chicken katsu that's crispy on the outside and juicy in the center. So stick around. Welcome back to No Recipes. I'm Mark Matsumoto, and I'm here to show you how to elevate your everyday meals. So smash that subscribe button and ring that bell so you don't miss out. Katsu is a Japanese way of pronouncing cutlet, and it's traditionally made with pork, but it's also delicious with chicken. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make two different styles of chicken katsu. For the first one, we're gonna be using chicken breast, which results in a leaner, lighter katsu. But because it's got less fat, it's a lot easier to dry out. So I've got a trick for you that's gonna help you out. For our second katsu, we're gonna be using chicken thighs. And because it's got a higher fat content, it's gonna be more flavorful and a lot harder to overcook. All right, let's have a look at our other ingredients. For the seasoning, we're gonna use a quarter teaspoon of onion powder, a half teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of white pepper. For the breading, we need a quarter cup of flour, one large egg, and one and a quarter cups of panko. Because breast meat is tapered, I like to slice it in half so that it's more uniform in thickness. This helps it cook through more quickly and evenly. In case you were wondering, this technique is called butterflying. If you end up with parts that are thicker than others, you can use something heavy like a kitchen mallet, rolling pin, or pot to even out the thicker parts a bit. The goal here is to get it an even thickness, not to pound it out, so don't overdo it. If you're using chicken thighs, you'll want to trim off any extra skin, fat, or gristle, but you don't want to get rid of all of it. Now let's get everything ready to bread and season our cutlets. For the seasoning, I'm going to go ahead and toss the white pepper and onion powder into the salt and then we're going to give that a stir to combine them evenly. You can get creative here with different spices, but I like to keep mine pretty simple. Next, you want to get a flat bottom tray or bowl that's just big enough to fit one cutlet. And we're going to break an egg into it. Then you just need to beat it up until it's evenly combined. The egg, along with the flour, acts like glue, allowing the panko to stick to the surface of the chicken. Okay, let's get another tray. And we're gonna dump the panko into this one. Now let's season the chicken. Just sprinkle the seasoning mix evenly over both sides of the cutlets. You don't need to use all of the seasoning if you think you have too much. Then we're gonna dust the chicken with a thin, even layer of flour. Make sure you don't miss any spots or you're gonna end up with bald spots on your chicken katsu. Okay, let's get ready to bread this. I usually like to line the trays up so they're in the order that you're gonna use them. Let's grab a piece of chicken and dip that into the egg. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but you don't want to miss any spots here either. Then we're going to set the chicken in the panko. I usually switch hands at this point, so my hand with egg on it doesn't get breaded along with the chicken. You want to scoop a good amount of panko over the chicken and gently pat it down to help it stick. Then you can flip it over and repeat this a few times until your chicken is evenly coated with the panko. Now we're just gonna move this over to an empty tray and repeat this process with the rest of the cutlets. Let's get the cooling rack ready by lining it with a few paper towels. To fry the chicken, you want to fill a heavy bottomed pot with about an inch and a half of oil and heat that to 170 degrees Celsius or 340 degrees Fahrenheit. It's important that your oil is hot enough or your cutlet's going to end up greasy. But if it's too hot, the breading will burn before the chicken is cooked through. Okay, let's go ahead and add a few cutlets to the oil. 
Now I'm gonna let this fry until the chicken is golden brown and cooked through. It takes about seven minutes on my setup, but there are so many variables that can affect the cooking time, this can vary quite a bit. If you're worried about it, you can use an instant read thermometer. You want to get the breasts up to an internal temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit and the thighs up to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll include a link to my favorite instant read thermometer in the description below. Be sure to flip the cutlets over a few times to make sure that they brown evenly. Okay, this is looking good, and I don't want to overcook the breast meat, so let's get it out of the oil first. Thigh meat needs to reach a higher internal temperature than breast meat, and it's also a lot harder to overcook, so let's give it a little more time. Okay, I think the thigh is done, so let's go ahead and cut these up. Just look at how juicy that is! Okay, let's slice up the breast meat as well. Time to plate these up! Fried foods are almost always served with thinly shredded cabbage in Japan. So I'm gonna start by adding a handful to one side of the plate. Then we can prop the chicken up on the bed of cabbage. Okay, let's get some of the chicken thighs on there as well. I'm also gonna garnish the plate with some tomatoes and snap peas for a little bit more color. To finish the plate off, I'm gonna drizzle on some tonkatsu sauce, but it's also delicious with Japanese curry. I'll include links to both recipes in the description below. Let's add a dab of Japanese mustard, and our chicken katsu is done. Whether you're into breast meat or thigh meat, both cuts make for chicken katsu that's shatteringly crisp on the outside and juicy on the inside. The thigh meat is always gonna be more flavorful, but as long as you don't overcook it, the breast meat is tender and delicious in its own way. Chicken katsu is easy and delicious, and there's so many ways that you can use the leftovers, so I hope you'll give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, let me know you wanna see more like it by giving this a big thumbs up and by sharing it with all your friends that love a good fried chicken. As always, I wanna thank my awesome patrons who helped fund this video. If you're learning something new from my recipes, I hope you'll consider clicking the link up here to join the No Recipes crew and help support our future videos. All right. I'm gonna go have this chicken katsu while it's still crispy, but I'll catch you in the next one.